Well, it felt at times today as though there was another new Tory MP popping his head above the uh, parapet or hers. Uh, every 20, 30 minutes or so, uh, someone else who was sharing a message with their constituents to say, I'm with you, Dominic Cummings shouldn't stay in his job. Good news for the uh, government in just the last uh, hour or so, though. Jeremy Hunt, the man who uh, contested the uh, last stages of the Tory leadership contest against Boris Johnson, he turned around and said, although he thought Dominic Cummings hadn't done the right thing, uh, he wasn't in favour of scalp hunting. I'm told that people in number 10 are looking through the lists of names of the 30 plus MPs who are out there and they're sensing even on the right and on the left their names that they would expect to be there quite a lot of them some select committee chair people who they think are probably just trying to establish their independence they're not yet convinced there is a critical mass of what you might call neutrals in there uh, to properly worry them though of course that could change the opinion polls uh, that we've seen already today and uh, there will be more and the government are pouring over their own uh, private opinion polls I'm sure those are looking the public ones pretty grim I'm told that some of the uh, evidence that the government is looking at could be a bit more in the grey area and giving a tiny bit of uh, comfort to Dominic Cummings but the truth is the Prime Minister Everybody you talk to in government says this isn't entirely sure what he'd do without Dominic Cummings. He is so central, the hub with the spokes coming out of it to this government, and really doesn't want to engage with the idea of losing him. There is, of course, as well, a massive public health messaging issue around the whole Dominic Cummings saga, and the government is going to have to contend uh, with that. And we had another example of the whole Dominic Cummings uh, saga ambushing uh, the government this afternoon at the Daily Press conference when Matt Hancock, the health secretary, uh, was ambushed by a question from a member of the public and looked like he was making up policy uh, on, on the hoof because he was uh, wrong-footed by someone saying, will you uh, reverse the fines that have been imposed on people for uh, travelling somewhere to get childcare? It's not clear anybody was fined for that, but it's symptomatic of the chaos pretty much round here the day after Dominic Cummings' press conference. The morning after the press conference that was supposed to draw a line, Dominic Cummings was still drawing fire. Tory MP after Tory MP issued messages calling for him to go. Under pressure from constituents who felt the Prime Minister's top aide had broken the lockdown rules they had obeyed, often at great personal sacrifice. The Scottish Office Minister and professional football referee Douglas Ross rang the Prime Minister last night to tell him he was resigning as a minister because he couldn't defend Dominic Cummings keeping his job. I've looked at this long and hard. Uh, I'm proud to you know, go to school a couple of miles from here. This is my community, my home community, and I uh, feel uh, better to go out in my community explaining my decision, having resigned from government today, than I could have done if I'd remained part of it and supported some of the actions. MPs from all wings of the party reported a torrent of hostile emails attacking the hypocrisy of a government aid, helping to issue stern shutdown instructions, but not following them himself. I've probably had to deal with 950, 1,000 emails in the last uh, two and a half days. Uh, I sense that most colleagues have had that sort of uh, number. People saying, yeah, we've done it, we have done this sacrifice. Yeah, what, why, why can't you uh, as the government? And I think that's really playing into the British sense of fairness. The body that speaks for NHS leaders said the saga was threatening the government's public health message. The leaders of the healthcare system uh, throughout the country have been concerned at this saga, among others, and the effect that it may have on staff confidence and indeed public confidence in terms of the guidance that government is issuing. Some Tory MPs said opinion polls surfacing today came as no surprise. One from YouGov suggested 71% of the population thought Dominic Cummings had broken the lockdown rules, even though he denies that. Nearly 60% said he should resign. The Dominic Cummings saga triggered a question from the public at the daily Downing Street press conference. Will the government review all penalty fines imposed on families travelling for childcare purposes during lockdown? Thanks. Well, uh, thank you, Martin. Um, the, um, that's a very good question. I think, especially uh, coming from a a man of the cloth. I think that is a perfectly reasonable to take away that question. I'll have to talk to my Treasury colleagues before I can answer it in full. We'll make sure that we write to you with a full answer and um, make an announcement from this podium. I think we can make that uh, commitment.
Officials rubbished the idea the health secretary had signalled a new policy, cancelling fines imposed for breaches of the lockdown. But it's symptomatic of a government still tripping up over debris left from yesterday's Dominic Cummings press conference, including lingering questions over why he made a one-hour round trip to Barnard Castle during lockdown. Yesterday, he said COVID had affected his eyesight, so he was checking if he was able to drive back to London. My wife said we should we should drive down the road and you should see if you can actually drive and see if your vision is weird or, or if you're okay. Would you go on a 60-mile round trip to test your eyesight? Um, uh, I have, on occasions in the past, um, driven with uh, my wife in order to make sure that... Uh, uh, that's the right way of putting it. Dominic Cummings also drew attention to his far-sightedness in writing about coronaviruses before many others. For years I have warned of the dangers of pandemics. Last year I wrote about the possible threat of coronaviruses and the urgent need for planning. But the blog he wrote last year doesn't appear to have mentioned coronaviruses. Research suggests that paragraph discussing them was inserted last month. A sense that Dominic Cummings was curating his own place in history will fuel his critics. But even some of those calling for him to go worry what the government would look like without the man who does so much to shape it. So what is the mood in Durham about Mr Cummings' decision to drive there from London and to visit Barnard Castle, ostensibly, as Gary said, to test his eyesight? Jane Dodge has been to find out whether people in the North East think his actions were understandable or could have put their area at greater risk. It was a five-hour journey from one end of the country to another, a journey to what Dominic Cummings described as a safe place. It was also to the area of the UK where people are most worried about the coronavirus, according to data released today by the Office of National Statistics. In a snapshot of opinions in Durham city centre, only one person thought it was a justified journey. It's no worse than what people are doing on the beaches and going up mountains and this, that and the other and calling out the emergency services. It's no different. He's just that he's got a little bit of a, uh, a higher profile. I think a lot of people would have forgiven him if he'd actually apologised for what he's done because he has broken some of the, the rules. So, yeah. And I think a lot of people think he's been stupid to do it. He tells a good story, but... Nobody, nobody believes it, basically. It's, um, and I think, really, it, it's paving the way for everybody to kind of slacken down, you know, slacken up with lockdown rules now. It wasn't just one journey of 264 miles from London to Durham on the 28th of March. On the 3rd of April, Dominic Cummings drove from his parents' home to the hospital to collect his wife and son. On the 12th of April, he drove to Barnard Castle and back, stopping off in woods on the way home a 60-mile round trip. And on the 13th of April, he drove back to London, a grand total of around 588 miles. It was the trip to Barnard Castle which has left some here scratching their heads. Dominic Cummings said he wanted to check if he was safe to drive because his eyesight seemed to have been affected by the disease. But he chose to take his wife and son. And then when he got there, he said he felt sick. Dominic Cummings said he sat on the riverbank for 15 minutes until he felt better. That's left one local MP struggling to understand why he took the risk. I started off with sympathy for him because I think a lot of people may be in, this, in similar positions who've got um, children. But if it's about childcare, um, Dominic Cummings then went on to take his child in a car on a 60 mile round trip to Barnard Castle to see if his eyesight was okay. Well, that, that's not responsible parenting in my book. What should he have done? He should have stayed at home and self-isolated. Mary Foy is Mr Cummings' parents' MP. She's one of three local Labour MPs. Yesterday, a local Tory MP, Deanna Davison, tweeted, I sincerely hope that reports that Dominic Cummings travelled to tourist spots in Barnard Castle are not true, as I know my constituents would expect those with power to follow the same guidelines and make the same sacrifices we all have to make. Today, she didn't reply to our request for an interview. None of the Conservative MPs in the North East we asked for an interview were available. But this story is far from over. 
Durham Police is still considering a request for an investigation into Mr Cummings' visit. Jane Dodge. Well, now I'm joined by the former chief prosecutor from the northwest of England, Nazia Avzal, who spent nearly a quarter of a century prosecuting cases. Uh, Mr Avzal, how could they have stayed within the rules and done that trip? Um, I can't think of how. If you look at the regulations, John, uh, it gives... It doesn't just define what a reasonable excuse is, but it gives you a dozen examples, uh, none of which would apply to what uh, Mr Cummings did. Um, I think he wanted to rely upon one that says he should be able to care for a vulnerable person. Well, that was brought in, as was the other one, about escaping risk of harm uh, for victims of domestic abuse who might have to leave because they are likely to suffer harm. Um, there is nothing in the uh, reasonable excuses, certainly the list that's in the regulations, that would permit the journey, not just the journey to Durham, the journey then to Barrow Castle and back, or the journey back to London. Um, it, it is, without a doubt in my mind, a breach. Uh, the issue then is what consequences flow from that. But you're a former prosecutor. You would admit that there's actually n not enough law here to prosecute, is there? Well, now there isn't. Um, the, the reality is that um, this, what's, what's happened in the last few days has just delivered chaos, confusion, complexity what, to what was a lesson that, or a message that all of us knew, namely we should stay at home and self-isolate if we're suffering. Um, I've been spoken to, a number of people have spoken, spoken to me today and said, well, what should I do in these circumstances? And I find it really difficult now to advise them, given the Prime Minister and his government have, in effect, said to Mr Cummings that he's allowed uh, to breach the regulations, as he did. So, there, you know, there aren't any consequences that will follow legally. Perhaps there's a potential retrospective penalty that might be uh, applied to him. The reality, however, is it was, what it's done to the messaging to the public that they now don't really know what they should be doing. Uh, and they think that maybe this gives them carte blanche uh, to literally ride a coach and horses through the regulations. Well, you have a pretty good uh, relationship with police sources. I'm just wondering how easy their job is now. I mean, has this made it complicated or is it all dead straightforward? It was very difficult from the outset. As you know, there was uh, some overzealousness because police officers aren't trained uh, to deliver a lockdown or enforce a lockdown. They've told me, and I speak to them regularly, that it's become more and more complicated, more and more difficult. In fact, some have said to me in the last 24 hours, it's now impossible. They just do not know how they can possibly enforce these regulations, given um, what government has set out, and particularly the Attorney General, who said, in effect, that what uh, Mr Cummings did was lawful. We know, those of us who are lawyers and who looked at it, that it wasn't lawful, it was a breach. But that means that mixed messaging has literally give the, given the police an impossible job. Well, if he doesn't sack Mr Cummings, perhaps what the Prime Minister needs to do is to come out and make a public declaration as to what people should do? Would you think that might be the right move? Well, in retrospectively, yes, we need some clarity, absolutely. The Prime Minister should say, right, this has happened, this is what the law should be. But it flows also in terms of consequences from... Where there was no apology yesterday for Mr Cummings, and then government ministers have stood by him throughout the last 24 hours or so. That, that message, you can't erase that. People have already seen and heard that. So whatever the Prime Minister now says, unfortunately, it's tinged and tainted by what he's already done. Supposing I'd said to you, look, I, this is so sensitive, we need you to come down to London and do a face-to-face -face interview on all this. Could you have done it legally within uh, all these regulations? Uh, if I, there's an exception that says you know, if I'm travelling for work, uh, but that would be to my normal workplace. It wouldn't be travelling 200 miles down to London. You know, my, my mother is on an oxygen tank in, Bir in Birmingham. My brother died uh, from COVID. I wasn't able to go to his funeral. You know, we've all had to make sacrifices. This is a shared responsibility. And when one person breaches that shared responsibility, all of us, all of us are affected by it. My sympathy, Mr Avzal. I'm so sorry to hear that. But thank you very much indeed for joining us.